Hey, and welcome back to Plug and Play V. And today we will be reviewing the Viofo A229 dash cam, a dual channel HD dash cam with 2K front and rear recording. So let's dive into the review and what's uh, good and bad about this new dash cam. Let's go. So in terms of installation, uh, very easy actually. I did uh, take the advantage of a trip up to Leo & Sons in Lawrence, Massachusetts. You may have seen our video up there of the Nissan Leaf battery replacement. Visited Matt, the owner, and uh, got a look around some of the stuff they've been going on with, but took the opportunity at the time to uh, get that installed and be able to film the process myself. Actually very simple, something that I think pretty much anyone could do in the driveway, as long as you're comfortable removing some of the trim from around the outside of your uh, doors on the front and back and then the uh, rear hatch it's all very simple uh, one of the things that was really nice about this one is the 2.8 millimeter coaxial cable which is almost half the thickness of the a129 which is the previous model of this fiofo dash cam so that 2.8 millimeter coaxial cable has a couple of benefits uh, aside from being really small footprint as it runs from the front camera around to the back and the hatch it also uh, minimizes electromagnetic interference so it's going to give you better um, video between the two uh, front and da rear dash cams. So those are the benefits of that. It's uh, almost 20 feet, just a little less. Uh, so it's solid, uh, long cable that'll go the length of the Ionic 5 and then some. So it gives you enough slack in the front and in the rear to allow everything to open and close and to give a bit of uh, extra in case you need that. So installation was very simple. Um, just kind of have 3M uh, sticky pads to attach the front GPS unit that sits in the car all the time. The dash cam itself is removable front and rear, but uh, you'll probably leave them in for the most part. They're very, very small profile, so really uh, not a problem at all. Just kind of put in the GPS uh, locator, slot the dash cam on the top. There's a USB-C power that runs down to either the cigarette lighter or the uh, hardwire kit, which we didn't do on this occasion, but may consider in the future. And we'll get into why in uh, in the next part of the review. Then the uh, coaxial cable, which is again, very small footprint, just runs through the headliner, goes down into the uh, two wells, through the trim and into the back to connect to the rear camera, which is also a pretty small uh, piece of kit. So installation, I think we were done within an hour and that was with me filming and asking questions. So someone in a hurry could easily get this done in probably half an hour or so. Filming it was uh, was useful. Good to see the uh, different pieces. All the tools used except for some of the lighting were in the kit. So you get the little tool to remove the trim. You get all the cables that you need. Um, it doesn't actually come in its purchase uh, with a HD card, but VOFO did provide one of those. So you'll need something that's uh, approved by the manufacturer, uh, one of the endurance, and we'll put up the uh, specifications of the memory card but that's essentially going to be loop recording so that uh, you can power this on film your various journeys and then obviously some of the things that uh, dash cams come in useful for that's what we'll get in next So in terms of specs, it's using a Sony Starvis IMX335 sensor. Uh, it has a GPS logger on that unit, as we said. It's a 2.4 inch HD display, which is actually pretty small, but uh, it's that small footprint that helps kind of keep it out of sight and makes it uh, less of a obtrusive kind of piece of kit. So then you have the two cameras, both are 2K, so you'll be recording in 1440 uh, front and rear, and you can set that to various settings. They have time-lapse functions, uh, there is some parking settings which we'll go into in a future video but essentially it's a good piece of kit it's one of the ones that's a little bit further up the market but again a lot of the reasons that people are getting a dash cam are this kind of peace of mind and having the recordings when they need them so spending a little bit extra at that price point makes a little bit of sense given what you're trying to achieve with avoiding costly insurance claims and uh, misunderstandings that kind of thing So obviously the biggest thing for a dash cam is uh, quality. And I gotta say, I've been pleasantly surprised by this. Um, again, not really cross shopping dash cams at the time of uh, recording. It wasn't something that I had really um, compared to other dash cams. But as we've moved to the Ionic 5 and owning the vehicle and not necessarily having a place where we wanted to mount a GoPro permanently, it's kind of something we've been starting to think about. And comparing the footage of uh, you know what we get in a GoPro to what we get in the uh, Viofo A229, 
um, it's better on the dash cam, to be honest, at least uh, certainly heading forwards um, and in night especially. Uh, I'll put some of the uh, comparisons up on the screen here. We've done some comparisons with the GoPro and the A229 side by side, where the uh, the daytime, you know, obviously the GoPro kind of shines in the daytime. It's got all its light, it has all everything it needs to process the image and uh, get out a very high quality uh, full HD experience, but once you get into those lower light scenarios, certainly uh, when it's pitch black or very dark, um, but you only have street lighting and the car's lights, but even in twilight, um, it does a better job than a GoPro of getting the detail and the kind of things that you would want in an accident situation. So uh, license plates, um, cars in different lanes, that kind of thing. The quality of the nighttime images is uh, noticeably better on the VOFO A229 than any kind of GoPro. We're using the GoPro Hero 9 here, mostly for recording in the car. Um, the footage seems to have been much better at night in the dash cam than in anything else we've used. So that will uh, be something you'll see more and more of as we try to kind of, you know, create more content and uh, not necessarily have all of the footage angles that we want. This has been something useful to see the angles of backing into a um, Electrify America stall, um, coming into busy gas stations, um, and not Thanksgiving trip we use some of the footage there to uh, look at the scenarios when we're pulling in and the uh, stations are congested. So from a content creation point of view, it's also been really useful. And that footage is as good or sometimes better, as I say, when it's comparing to night footage than a GoPro has been able to achieve. In terms of usability, uh, you can certainly uh, just plug it in and go. Uh, I did a few days before we set up the Wi-Fi connection or anything like that. When you set it up, you can do two, one of two things. You can either go via the 2.4-inch uh, HD display up here, which is okay, but obviously the size of that screen is uh, making it a little bit difficult to see what you're doing. The more preferable way, in hindsight, would be to link it up with your phone to the VOFO app and the uh, Wi-Fi connection that it has, and then look at the there, then you're going to get a more accurate uh, placement and a better kind of feel for what you're going to get when the footage comes out versus just trying to do it from the front screen here. But all in all, that gives you a lot of nice features. Once you do get into that Wi-Fi, you can start to uh, activate recording sessions from it, uh, delete stuff uh, wirelessly by, via your phone, look at the footage, um, store it, give it different titles, change the settings of GPS, time, date, all that good stuff that kind of, you know, you do once and then forget about it, but it's significantly easier via the phone. So certainly the app uh, is useful that way and the Wi-Fi connection is appreciated. So pros and cons of the VOFO A229 dash cam. Uh, the design size is really good. Uh, honestly, behind here, this is pretty much where I'm sitting when I'm driving. So from my seating position here, only just visible a little bit below. Um, I don't think you really need to see the screen there because it's, uh, you know, it's only going to be small and you're not going to get a lot of detail. Uh, same with the rear. You can kind of see it in the... Uh, rear view mirror here but again that's uh, positioned just above the uh, the sight line and seems to do a pretty good job there are some um, vagaries with the ionic 5 because of the lack of a rear wiper and uh, if you're in a different vehicle where the wiper can actually reach you may want to reconsider where you position it we put it up deliberately quite high so that it's positioned in the spot that is covered by the spoiler and where the arrow goes down a little bit because that tends to be a little bit clearer again that's more uh, unique to the ionic 5 than anything else it's had the uh, complaints for as long as it's been around that it doesn't have a rear wiper so that is going to be something a little bit different just for this uh, particular car but in general uh, as long as you get the positioning right and you have a clear view from the uh, camera back there to capture a good uh, bit of footage uh, gps logging has been nice and the time and day obviously that's fairly standard but uh, something that uh, is nice to have but the biggest thing there would be the quality the front and rear 2k that has been uh, very helpful and that design that just keeps it out of view but in the right places to record the footage that you need. And that minimalist design has obviously been uh, used as a positive, but then having the smaller screen does mean that it can be a little bit harder to see 
and adjust when you're setting it up. Really, realistically, that's something you only really have to do one time, so it's not a big deal. So if someone, you know, has vision problems or wants to really have something a little bigger, you may want to go with uh, a slightly more substantial unit. Uh, in terms of build quality, everything feels pretty good. Obviously, we've touched on the quality of the uh, footage. It does have slightly plasticky buttons. If I press them, the uh, feel isn't quite as premium as uh, some of the modern day electronics you might expect. But again, this is not something that you're going to be interacting with constantly. You know, it does have buttons there to hit record emergency recording turn it on and off and adjust the settings but you can do that via the wi-fi settings and it's probably better to do via the app because your phone has a more intuitive interface anyway so not a massive con but something that could certainly be improved in future models and other than that no real complaints i mean there are some uh, limits to its capabilities obviously you're not always going to capture every detail in low light if there's no street lighting you may struggle to get some of the uh, license plate but this is more moving into to the negatives of any dash cam that is going to struggle in those kind of scenarios. So some of the features not touched on in this video, but hopefully will be in a future one. Uh, we didn't install the hardwire kit, uh, just as a kind of temporary measure to kind of see how it goes with the uh, plug-in via the power via the cigarette lighter. You know, if you want to use some of the features like the parking mode, which has uh, some pretty interesting stuff that we'll need to test uh, from the auto event detect, which will record uh, 15 seconds before an event and uh, 30 seconds after it. Uh, time lapse in that setting as well, uh, one, two, three, five, or 10 frames per second to keep it a record of what's happening around you when you're parked, but it's not going to uh, use up as much of the memory space on your memory card and then low bitrate recording for that same reason. So there's a bunch of features in the parking mode that we would like to test. They also included a Bluetooth remote and a polarizing lens for when it's sunnier and uh, to reduce glare. Haven't really had a chance to test those extras out, but again, we'll do a follow-up video in about uh, three or four months just to see how it's going, what kind of usage we've got out of it, and whether we've jumped into this hardwire kit or used the parking mode. So final thoughts on the VOFO A229 dual dash cam. I'm really happy actually. It's, uh, you know, something that, as, as I say, we didn't really have top of the list, um, but was always something to think about and um, just interested in what kind of quality we would get and not putting the two together with content creation and uh, needing to film various angles and have more footage to choose from. Um, it's been really useful. Quality is excellent. Definitely surprised by the nighttime um, level of recording. I guess you should expect that to some extent extent in something that is trying to capture those level of details as license plates that kind of thing but uh, you know for our ends of making videos as well as uh, the safety uh, safety net and peace of mind of having the recordings going on um, that's been very useful uh, installation super easy as we've said so after a month using it definitely would recommend uh, really happy with it appreciate uh, VOFO for sending it through um, not something again if it was uh, not a good piece of kit I would call it out here for for the, exactly that reason but for our ends and for what we've been using it for in the last month or so, two thumbs up, very positive, and uh, definitely would recommend it. So have you tried VOFO products? Do you have a dash cam that you love that you'd like to share down in the comments? Uh, pop that down there if so. Uh, obviously, we'll have more content coming up on this one, and you'll see it in some of the videos, but uh, it would be interesting to hear other people's experiences with dash cams, whether you love them, hate them, or whether you've got something like a Tesla and that sentry mode has really been valuable for you. Thanks for watching, as always, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.